Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PPR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Welcome to another edition of the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Kenneth Gruenfelder, and we got a jam-packed show for you today. For today's show, we're going to do a rankings of the quarterbacks in the AFC first, like we did the NFC last time. We're going to do a draft analysis of the AFC East, so we'll do the draft analyses for that conference. We just wrapped up the NFC. Then we're going to go into the NFL Week 1 schedule. We're going to talk about the matchups for Week 1 and what expectations I have for that in terms of fantasy. And then I'm going to do my top 10 fantasy quarterbacks going into the 2021 NFL season. Now, I know I did another QB rankings you know, way back when, but now I'm going to be doing the quarterbacks that I think are going to be the best going into the 2021 NFL season and the ones that I think are going to break out. All right, so let's get right into the first segment with the AFC quarterback rankings by each division. So we'll start with the AFC, and we're going to go from last to first. So Zach Wilson, I have at number four, was the quarterback that the Jets took with the second overall pick in this past NFL draft. I think he's going to be the last rated quarterback in terms of fantasy I just think that, you know, he's kind of a project. You know, the Jets are going to kind of have to, you know, deal with some growing pains with this quarterback. You know, he's got the arm talent. I think the Jets did a nice job by bringing in some weapons, you know, through free agency, through the draft, you know, drafting Elijah Moore, you know, the speedy wide receiver, and then getting Corey Davis uh, over from the Titans, who had a pretty good season last year with the guys that they already have there in Denzel Mims and Jamison Crowder. So we'll see how that offense works. But I I just think in terms of fantasy, he's probably going to be the worst out of these quarterbacks. So I have him at number four. And at number three, I have Tua Tungavailoa. And, you know, a lot of people are very critical of him. This is a big year for him. They brought in Will Fuller from the Texans. And they drafted Jalen Waddell, the wide receiver out of Alabama, who had previous chemistry with, Tua uh, during his tenure at Alabama so you know there's a lot of weapons for the Dolphins and and I've talked about it you know in the past couple of shows about how the Dolphins did a nice job you know adding more talent around Tua so he can succeed but let's go through Tua's stats from last season so he completed 64 percent of his passes had 1800 yards passing 11 touchdowns to five interceptions had 109 rushing yards three touchdowns three rushing touchdowns, averaged 13 and a half fantasy points per game, had 135 fantasy points overall in terms of standard leagues. And let's kind of go through each game. So his first start against the Rams, he had five points, then had a nice outing, 20 to 28, 248 passing yards, two touchdowns, 21 points in that contest against the Cardinals. He was good in that game. Week 10, Against the Chargers was 15 of 25, 169 passing yards, two touchdowns, had 14 points in that game, had seven points the week after that against Denver. He was actually benched in that game for Ryan Fitzpatrick, who is no longer there. And that's, you know, a quick thing. You know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not going to be breathing down his neck because, you know, there was a couple times in the course of the season, like the game against Denver and the game against Oakland, which I'll get, oh, sorry, not Oakland, the Vegas Raiders. That was another game that, 
the Raiders, they took out, or sorry, the Dolphins, they took out Tua, and they replaced him with Ryan Fitzpatrick. So, yeah, there was a couple times where the Dolphins, you know, took out Tua, put in Fitzpatrick, because they believe that Fitzpatrick gave him a better spark and provided them with big plays. So, yeah, that was one instance against Denver. Then against the Bengals, had 16 points in that game, was 26-39, 296 passing yards, one touchdown. Um, yeah, so other than that, uh, also against the Chiefs, that was a, you know, that was a pretty good game for him. 28-48, 316, two touchdowns, 27 points in that game. Then against New England was 20-26, 145 yards, had 18 points in that game, had two rushing touchdowns in that contest. And then against Vegas, as I was talking about before, 17 of 22, 94 passing yards, one touchdown, had only eight points in that game. And then against Buffalo, this was a crazy, crazy game. So he went 35 of 58, 361 passing yards, one touchdown, three interceptions in that game, and had 15 points in that game. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, they they talk about Tua's you know, deep ball, and, you know, they, they want him to provide more explosive plays for the offense. And listen, he's got the he's got the receivers for it. And I think he could definitely make some big strides next year, you know, to improve himself. You know, like I said, he's not going to have Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, breathing down his neck. You know, he's going to have the ability to, you know, start some games and prove himself. Now he's got Jacoby Brissett, who they brought in over from the Colts to back him up. And I think Jacoby Brissett is a serviceable backup. But I, I think Tua has the potential to, you know, be good this year and be solid. You know, I mean, he was coming off of that hip injury that he had. So, you know, now he's a year removed from that. So let's see how he does. Um, I, I think he could definitely be better. I, I think he's not quite there yet because I, I think that, you know, the other quarterbacks that I have ahead of him, I, I think provide, um, you know, I don't want to say more upside, but I think they're going to be a little bit better, even though one of them might be a little bit controversial um, on this in this division. So at number two, I have Cam Newton. Now, I have Cam Newton at number two because I, I think the Patriots adding in more weapons for Cam Newton, I, I think that's going to help him tremendously. Um, you look at Cam's numbers, you know, he was QB 15 last year had eight passing touchdowns, which, yeah, that was really bad. That, w- that was not good for Cam Newton. Um, but like I said, the weapons that they added, I think the Patriots' offense is going to be a lot better than what it was last year. You bring in Jonu Smith, you bring in Hunter Henry, the two top free agent tight ends. You bring in Nelson Aguilar, who had a breakout season with the Raiders in 2020. You bring in Kendrick Bourne, who's a serviceable wide receiver. And you have some continuity in the running game. You have Damian Harris back there, who I think is going to be a sleeper going into a lot of fantasy drafts. You have Sony Michelle, and you have James White. You bring him back, and a lot of there were a lot of rumors out there that he might go to Tampa Bay to play with Brady again. You know, so they they got some weapons there. You know, it's not like last year when their best wide receiver was Jacoby Myers. So you know, I, I think the offense is going to be better. And you know, let's kind of look at. Cam Newton's stats. So, like I mentioned before, he was QB 15, had only eight passing touchdowns, which was not good, you know. Um, He did have 258 fantasy points last year. He averaged 17.3 fantasy points per game. Now, the thing here is he had 12 rushing touchdowns, which was really good last year. Um, You look at some of the games, some of the good games that he had. He was good against Miami in week one, had 25 points in that game, but, you know, that came mostly because of the running game. You know, 15 rushing attempts, 75 yards, averaged 5 yards per carry, two rushing touchdowns in that game, had 25 points in that game. Then in Week 2, he had 34 points against the Seattle Seahawks. He went 30 of 44, 397 yards, a touchdown and interception. And then on the ground, 11 rushing attempts, 47 yards, and two touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns in that game. So really, that kind of came, you know, more so on the ground. Um, as opposed to through the air. And also, you know, we kind of learned, you know, throughout the season that Seattle's defense really wasn't that good. Um, Towards the end of the season, it did get a little bit better uh, when they acquired Carlos Dunlap from the Bengals to help out with pass rush. But, yeah, Seattle's defense really wasn't that good last year. And then, you know, against the Raiders, only 17-28, 162 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception. 
Um, didn't have any rushing touchdowns in that game. Only had 11 points. Had 17 when he came back against the Broncos because you know he was he missed a couple of games due to COVID. Um, so he only went 17 to 25. Um, he had two interceptions in that game. Had a rushing touchdown. Um, didn't do anything against the 49ers the week after that. Only went nine of 15, 98 yards, three picks, and had negative point one eight points in that game. Terrible, terrible. You know he did have a lot of he, he did have a couple of stinkers uh, throughout the season. You know against the Jets, twenty seven to thirty five, two hundred seventy four passing yards, um, twenty four points in that game. Had two rushing touchdowns. Uh, the week before that against the Bills, he had a rushing touchdown. He had 18 points in that game. Had 16 in Week 10 against uh, Baltimore. Had 19 against Houston in Week 11. Had 23 against the Chargers in Week 13. He had two rushing touchdowns there. And then he had 37 points in Week 17 against the Jets. He had three passing touchdowns in that game. Um, I believe he actually he also caught a pass. Uh, he also caught a touchdown pass. I'm not 100% sure, but, um, yeah, so he had a good game there, you know, in terms of fantasy. You know, I, I put him ahead of Tua because I think he's going to be a little bit better, you know, with the weapons around him. I mean, the Patriots offense can't be as bad as it was last year, can it? I mean, I, I don't think so. Um, so you got that going for them, um, you know, bringing in those weapons. I, I think that's going to help out Cam Newton. And I just think that they're going to continue to use Cam Newton on the ground, you know, because that was the strength last year you know, for them in the, in the, in the ground game, you know? So I, I think with the combination of that, I think he's going to be a little bit better than Tua. Um, I could be completely wrong. I mean, I'm kind of going more off of experience, you know, but I, I think that Miami's offense on paper is a little bit better than the Patriots. I, I think their wide receivers are better. I, I think the Patriots running backs are a little bit better. No offense to Miles Gaskin, who had a really nice year. Um, I think the Patriots running backs are a little bit better. Um, but I, I think the Dolphins, um, weapons at wide receiver, I think are a little bit better than, um, the Patriots, but I, I think that Cam is going to be effective in the ground game because he's a big guy. And I think because of that, he's going to be a little bit better than Tua in fantasy. And I, the jury is still out on Tua. So we'll see how Tua does and hopefully he answers the bell. So yeah, so Zach Wilson, then Tua, then um, then Cam, and then number one is obviously Josh Allen. Um, I, I think Josh Allen is, is going to be one of those guys that's going to be up there for MVP this year. I, I think that he's going to throw 40 touchdowns, 40 plus touchdowns, um, this year. You know, he's made improvements every year since entering the league in 2018. And, you know, they, they added some weapons for him, you know, more weapons for him. Now Emmanuel Sanders comes into the fold to go with Stefan Diggs and Cole Beasley. Um, you know, I, I think that the only thing that's bad about the Bills is really their running game, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. So hopefully they can get that straightened out. Hopefully Singletary and, and Zach Moss, they can figure it out in the running game. But outside of that, Josh Allen, he's going to be a top fantasy quarterback this year, and he is the top fantasy quarterback in his division. So that's the AFC East. So let's move on. Let's go to the AFC West. So at number four, I have Drew Locke. I think out of all these quarterbacks, he is the weakest. Um, I, I just think because, you know, a lot of people expected him to make a major jump, you know, going into 2020, and he really didn't do that. He was injured a couple of games. He came back. You know, he did have a couple of good games, but he really didn't take that next step like the Broncos were hoping he was going to. And who knows? They might be getting another quarterback on the way in Aaron Rodgers. We don't know, but um, that's it, all speculation. For right now but looking at drew Locke's stats from 2020 he started in 13 games he completed 57 percent of his passes had barely under 3,000 yards 16 touchdowns to 15 interceptions had 181 fantasy points he did have a couple of good games um you know he had 29 points in week nine against the falcons and this is in terms of fantasy a lot of that was garbage points um, he had 25 against the Panthers. That was a good game for him, even though the Panthers' defense really isn't that good. Uh, in Week 14, he had 24 against the Raiders in Week 17. Um, so he did have a couple good games, but, you know, was a little bit lackluster. A lot of people thought he was going to be a solid fantasy quarterback, especially because of the weapons that the Broncos have. 
um, but he really didn't take that next step. They did have some injuries um, over the course of the season. I mean, the, the whole team, you know, for the Broncos had a lot of injuries, including Drew Locke. You know, Cortland Sutton, he tore his ACL. He was out the whole year. Um, I, th- I believe Jerry Judy was injured a couple games, you know. Um, you know, the running backs were banged up a little bit. So, you know, you could say that that might be the reason why Drew Locke did struggle. I mean, that did, that was kind of a factor, but, you know, he did kind of underperform, um, you know, both in terms of fantasy and in terms of, you know, what the Broncos really expected from him. So I got him at four. I think the other three QBs in the division are a lot better than Drew Locke. So with number three, I got Derek Carr. Derek Carr, I think, was a solid quarterback last year in fantasy. Um, he had 272 fantasy points, which was actually his career high. He averaged 17 points per game in terms of fantasy. Had 27 touchdowns to nine interceptions. Um, had 140 yards on the ground. Had three rushing touchdowns. That was the most of his career. Uh, some of the good games that he had, I mean, he was pretty consistent. You know, week one, 13. Week two, 21. 15 in week three. 20 in week four. 23 in week 5, 19, in week 7, um, week 8, had 12, 14, the week after, then he had 7, which was bad, that was against the Broncos, that wasn't that good, 21 points against the Chiefs in week 11, had only .6 against the Falcons, that was a terrible game, uh, had 31 points against the Jets in week 13, week 14 against the Colts, he had 23, only had 2 in week 15 against the Chargers, had 23 against Miami, and then he had 20 against the Broncos in Week 17. He only had two against the Chargers because now I just remembered he uh, was taken out in that game. He left with an injury. So Derek Carr was a solid quarterback um, in fantasy last year, and I, and I anticipate he'll be better again. Um, you know, the Raiders were good offensively last year. Um, I think that, you know, they got good weapons around him with Waller, with Josh Jacobs. So I would say Derek Carr is number three. Then at number two, I'm going to say Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill, um, you know, they rebuilt the offensive line for the Chiefs. You know, they're going to be really good next year or this year. Sorry, again, um, you know, but I don't think he's going to be the number one QB in his division. I think that's going to be Justin Herbert. I, I think this is the year that Justin Herbert is like that number one QB, you know, in terms of their division. Um, you know, um, not to say that Mahomes is not going to be good, like I said. Um, I, I think they're going to be neck and neck, of course, and it's going to be a treat to watch them twice a year. I mean, you can't go wrong picking one of the two. I mean, they're solid QB ones across the board, um, but I, I think Herbert's going to be a little bit better. So that's the NFC West. Then in the AFC South, first of all, I have the Texans last just because I don't know who the quarterback is going to be. They drafted a quarterback. They have Tyrod Taylor. They traded for Ryan Finley. So I don't know what the situation is there. Stay away from that. Stay away from the Houston Texans. Trevor Lawrence, I think, is going to be number three just because he's going to be a rookie coming in. Let's see how he does. Let's see how he handles an NFL playbook. Let's see how he reads NFL defenses. You know, I think he's going to be productive in fantasy. You know, He's definitely neck and neck. With Ryan Tannehill, I think, you know, to be like that solid QB too. And I think Carson Wentz is going to be number one just because I, I just think that, you know, with that offensive line, with the running game, with the receivers, I mean, I, it, it's going to be hard for Carson Wentz not to do well. Um, you know, I, I've talked about how him going back and, you know, reuniting with Frank Reich, the offensive coordinator that he was with in Philadelphia. You know, I, I think that that's going to help him a lot. That's going to help him tremendously. And I think he's going to be the best QB in this division, and I think he could be a solid QB1 this year. I really do, because him being protected, I think as long as he's protected and they keep him upright, you know, he's going to be able to sling that ball around, and he's going to be successful doing it. So, you know, I got Carson Wentz at number one in the AFC South. I think Trevor Lawrence and Ryan Tannehill, they both could be solid, you know, QB2s if you're doing a 2QB league. I think they could also be backups. Um, But I think Carson Wentz is probably going to be the best QB in that division and then we move over to the AFC North so I have Joe Burrow last just because I don't know what the status is with Joe Burrow whether or not he's going to play um, at least for the start of the season I anticipate that he will start at some point during the year I don't know if he's going to start week one it seems like he might be able to so that's going to be good 
you know, because it was unfortunate that his season got derailed because of his knee being teared to shreds, you know, by the Washington football team because the Bengals don't have an offensive line. You know, that was really bad. Um, but, you know, they got some good weapons around him. And, you know, hopefully they are they can better protect him this season. You know, Joe Mixon, hopefully he's playing, you know, because he was injured a lot last year. So hopefully he does well. You know, and the Bengals, they, they got something going on their offense. So let's see how they do. So next I have Ben Roethlisberger just because, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure what, you know, what Joe Burrow is going to do. You know, and when is he going to start? You know, if Joe Burrow was starting, I'd, I'd pro- like, if I knew Joe Burrow was starting, like, right now, you know, from week one, I'd probably put him ahead of Ben. But because I don't, I don't know when he's going to come back, I'm putting him last. But, you know, listen, Ben had a good season last year. You know, towards the end, it, it wasn't, it didn't really look that good. Um, the Steelers' offensive line is very questionable. Um, you know, I think Ben has the potential to put up a lot of garbage points. I don't want to say the Steelers are going to be awful this year because I don't think that. But, you know, Ben did not look good towards the end of the last year. Um, I think he's kind of a guy you want to stay away from in fantasy. I, I think he could be like a late round pick, you know, possibly even a waiver wire pick. I mean, when are we saying that about Ben Roethlisberger? He was used to be, you know, one of those guys you draft immediately, you know, a quarterback because of the numbers he put up. But I'm just not sure with, you know, with everything going on in Pittsburgh, the offensive line and all that. And then I, then at number two, I have Baker, Baker Mayfield. I, I just think Baker was, you know, made big strides last year. You know, the offensive line was top three, according to pro football focus, you know, they they addressed the offensive line. You know, they were top five in rushing. They were ranked the number one offensive line, you know. So, you know, I, I think with all that and, you know, back, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. coming back, and they still got Jarvis Landry and Austin Hooper and David Njoku at the tight end spots. They got a lot of weapons, and the Browns are going to be really good this year, and I think Baker is going to be one of those guys that's going to fly under the radar. And he's a solid QB, too, and he could possibly be a QB1 um, in 2021. So, yeah, Baker at two, and then I think Lamar Jackson is at number one just because of, you know, the dual threat that he is. You know, he got to, he's got to develop more as a passer, but, you know, he's dangerous, you know, when it comes to running the football. So, you know, I have him at number one. I think now with what the the Ravens did, bringing in Sammy Watkins to help out in the passing game, drafting Rashad Bateman, hopefully that, you know, helps out Lamar in the passing game because the Ravens were last in passing yards, so... Um, hopefully they're able to correct that for their sake. So those are my quarterback rankings for the AFC. So with that, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to do a draft analysis of the AFC East. So stick around. We'll be right back here on the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. here on the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. So for segment number two, we are going to do a draft analysis of the AFC East and what players I think you should draft that play in this division. So let's get right into it. Let's go from last to first like I've been doing. So last place last year in that division was the New York Jets. So I have Denzel Mims, Jamison Crowder, uh, Elijah Moore, Tevin Coleman, Corey Davis, and Zach Wilson as the players that, you know, you maybe want to consider for fantasy. Um, A lot of them, you know, 
I mean, I, I just included them just because, you know, those are the guys that, um, you know, are on their offense. Um, you look at, you know, Denzel Mims really didn't do that much last year. Um, was, you know, he did miss some time due to injury. You know, really was a, a non-factor last year. Did have a couple of, um, you know, good moments, you know, for the Jets. Um, but again, still very young, you know, a lot of time to develop. You know, you look at Jamison Crowder's numbers, only played in 12 games last year for the Jets, had 699 receiving yards, six touchdowns, 113 fantasy points. Um, his best game came in week 16 against the Browns. He had 22 points in that contest. He threw a touchdown pass in that game. He was wide receiver 39, um, was 21st in touchdown receptions with six. Um, you know, he, he's a good bench player, you know, a good at flex option, but really nothing, you know, flashy, you know, and you know, the one guy that I want to get into is a guy that the Jets brought in, um, you know, from free agency was Corey Davis. Um, I think I talked about him once on another show. Um, I don't remember. I think it was, uh, you know, one of the segments I did, uh, where I talked about, you know, players that I was interested in seeing how they were going to do on their new teams. And Corey Davis, he had a career high in fantasy points, had 126 fantasy points. Um, did have a couple of decent games, had 18 points against the Bengals in Week 8, had 8 receptions for 128 uh, receiving yards and a touchdown in that contest. Uh, you look at the game against the, I almost said the Lions, but that, that was a game I was going to bring up after. You look at the game against the Browns, he had 11 receptions, 182 receiving yards, and one touchdown in that game. His longest reception was for 43 yards. Averaged 15.2 yards per target. Um, yeah, he had 24 points in that contest. That was a shootout of a game. Well, really, it was, you know, one-sided for a while. The Browns were up, I think, at most 38-7. to And then, you know, the Titans made it interesting. And I think the final score ended up being, like, I don't remember. It was, like, 30-45-42, uh, something like that. It was a crazy game. Um, the Browns, they, they proved themselves in that game. But with Corey Davis, you, you know, that game that he did well in against the Browns, like I was just talking about, then only had four receptions, but he had 110 receiving yards, a touchdown. Um, his longest reception was for 75 yards. I believe that was the touchdown reception that he had. Um, and he had 17 points in that game. So he had a couple of good games. You know, I, I think with the Jets, you know, he's going to be the number one guy. So let's see how he does with Zach Wilson. Um, you know, a lot of people raved about Zach Wilson's deep ball. You know, so Corey Davis is going to be one of those deep threats that he's going to be going to. You know, I think the Jets, they got some nice pieces, but they, you know, they're, they're still kind of ways away, um, you know, in terms of, you know, where they want to be. Uh, so, yeah, Corey Davis, another guy, you know, you could consider for fantasy. I, I think really when it comes what it comes down to is Crowder. And um, and Corey Davis, those are probably the guys that you'd want to take. Elijah Moore, I think, is a guy that you know could be drafted mostly in dynasty leagues. I could see you know him maybe possibly getting drafted you know in late rounds in you know your typical fantasy drafts. You know Mims, I think he's a guy that's going to be undrafted for the most part, but he can come on strong. You never know. Um, you know Tevin Coleman looks like he's going to be the lead running back, so he deserves some consideration, but I think with his injury history, I think he's a guy you kind of want to stay away from, maybe be a waiver wire pickup. And then Zach Wilson, I think in terms of dynasty leagues, definitely a guy that is very, you know, you could consider drafting, but um, I, I think um, outside of that, you know, he's probably a guy that's going to go undrafted, you know, maybe be a waiver wire pickup. You know, if a 2QB league, you know, maybe he could be your third QB. But other than that, that's kind of where I see you know, um, the Jets situation uh, playing out in terms of fantasy. So let's move on to the Dolphins now. Um, so the players that I, you know, say you can consider drafting, uh, Tua, who I talked about before, uh, Devontae Parker, Jalen Waddle, Will Fuller, Miles Gaskin, and Mike Gesicki. So, you know, looking at, you know, I, I talked about Tua's stats already, but when you look at Miles Gaskin, he's a guy that I think could be a solid uh, running back number two. Um, for your fantasy team, he did only start in six games. He played in 10 last season, um, had 584 rushing yards, uh, three touchdowns last season, three rushing touchdowns. Um, he had 123 fantasy points. 
Um, you know, from week five to week 17, I mean, he did only play in six games from five, week five to week 17. He didn't play in the games uh, week nine through um, 12. But, you know, from, you know, week six, or sorry, week five, um, against San Francisco, he had 15 points against the 49ers. He had 12 points against the Jets in week six. In week eight, he had 10 points against the Rams, 12 against the Bengals. He had 28 against the Vegas Raiders. Um, he went 14 attempts, 87 rushing yards, had two receiving touchdowns in that game. That was obviously his best game of the season. And then in week 17 against the Bills, he had a rushing touchdown. He had 13 points in that contest. I think he could be a solid RB2. I think he's most likely going to be the lead back in Miami. And I, I think he could be a solid RB2. I really do. So, you know, he's a guy you could probably get in the mid-rounds. Um, you know, I think with this offense, this offense has a potential to be really good. I mean, I think it really all hinders on the quarterback, which I talked about um, talked about before. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. I, I think Miles Gaskin, you know, he could be, like I said, it could be a solid RB2. So you look at Mike Kosicki now. He was tight end seven last year. He had six receiving touchdowns, which was ninth in the NFL. He started in nine games. He played in 15, had his best season, 703 receiving yards, six touchdowns, averaged 8.3 yards per target, um, 13.3 yards per reception, um, did not fumble last year. Average 7.1 fantasy points per game. I mean, you know, I've talked about how tight end is a very thin spot when it comes to fantasy. Um, but he had 106 fantasy points. You know, some of his best games, he had 19 against the Bills in Week 2. He had 14 against the Bengals in Week 13. 18 against the Chiefs in Week 14. And that's really about it. I mean, other than that, you know, it really wasn't that, um, really wasn't that impactful. Um, a lot of duds did have a game where he scored zero points. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, he, he could be a solid tight end, you know, for you. Let's see how he does with the full year of Tua. You know, I, I think he's a, a boomer bust player. He's very hit or miss. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, will admit, you know, he was a guy I drafted. I, I thought, you know, he was going to be productive and really, uh, really was disappointing. I mean, Tight ends are very disappointing. I mean, outside of a couple, you know, like Kittle, Kelsey, and Waller, you know, there's really there's really not a lot of productivity you get out of the tight end spot. You know, I mean, there's a few good ones here and there, you know, Mark Andrews and Robert Tanyan, but really, once you get out of, like, the top, you know, five, I mean, it's really just, you know, you're, you don't really know what you're going to get. And Mike Isecki, let's see how he does this year. I, I think he is, you know, he still warrants um, some respect, and, and I think that, you know, people should still draft him. Because, you know, his track record, he is pretty good. You know, just he does have a few games where he just disappears. Um, but I, I think he is worth, you know, at least having on your team. I don't know. I don't necessarily believe he could be your starter. I mean, he's definitely, you know, worth consideration for a guy you want to have on your bench. Um, but I, I think in terms of starting, I think you kind of look elsewhere um, to get uh, another tight end that produces a lot better than him. And then you look at Devontae Parker, you know, he's wide receiver 40 last year, had only 103 fantasy points, which was a lot less than what he had the year before that, where he had 174. Um, he had 793 receiving yards, um, he had four receiving touchdowns in 2020, and some of his best games, I mean, really, he didn't have a game over 20 points. You know, he had 11, he had 11 a couple times, um, he had 12 in one game. You know, but outside of that, a lot of the single digits. Um, and this is a guy that, you know, I think a lot of people expected him to be very, very productive in fantasy. And he really didn't do that. But now you add Bull Fuller, you add Jalen Waddle. I think that's going to help him out tremendously. And, you know, I, I think that's going to do a lot for this Miami Dolphins offense. You know, so, you know, we'll have to see. I mean, now he's got some weapons. You know, he's got some guys around him that can, you know, provide distractions, you know, for defenses. Um, so we'll have to see. I, I think he's another guy, you know, he, he could be a solid number two wide receiver or flex option. Um, and then probably the same thing goes with Will Fuller. You know, he's going to be suspended, you know, for a couple games in the beginning of the season. But, you know, he's another guy that you could look at and potentially get. 
You know, I, I mean, he was he was the number one guy in um in Houston last year. You know, now that DeAndre Hopkins is no longer there, I mean, he did have good games. You know, he had eleven week one against um, the Chiefs, and that was kind of in garbage time where he got most of those uh, most of those yards. Uh, had eleven again in week three, sixteen the week after that, eleven, eighteen, then nine, then sixteen, then three, then eight, and then he exploded in week twelve against the Lions. That was the um, the Thanksgiving game. He had six receptions, 171 yards, two touchdowns. His longest reception was 40 yards. Um, averaged 28 and a half yards per reception. Um, and yeah, had 29 points in that contest. And then he got suspended after that because of the PED use. So I, I think he's another guy that, you know, you want to keep on your radar. Um, definitely could be solid for this Miami Dolphins offense once he comes back from his suspension. Um, and they got a lot of weapons around him, and like I said, really, it, it all hinders on the quarterback with Tua. And I think Tua is a guy you want to get as well. You know, you know, he could be a solid QB two, or he could be your QB three. You know, in terms of two QB leagues, he can be your backup um, in your one QB leagues. But yeah, that's kind of where I see uh, a lot of the players for the Dolphins falling, um, and who I think you should take from the Dolphins. And then now moving on to the Patriots. You know, I, I think both tight ends that they brought in, I think they're both you know, draft worthy, you know, um, like I've talked about a lot on the show, I I think the, you know, the Patriots, they love to utilize the tight ends and, you know, those two tight end sets is something that they did a lot in the past, you know, with Gronk and Aaron Hernandez back in the day with Gronk and Scott Chandler, you know, last year they had, you know, virtually no tight end at all. And, you know, they really, uh, they did a great job in correcting that issue and bringing in, you know, not one, but two of the top tight ends in free agency. I mean, that's just, you know, let's see how they do with that. Um, I, I think those are two guys that, you know, you would want to get, you know, both Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith. Um, I think that, you know, Damian Harris, I talked about, I, I think he's another guy that you want to get, um, did show some flashes. I, I don't, you know, the Patriots running back situation is always very tricky. You know, you don't really, it seems to always be somebody different, you know, each week. You know, whether it was Rex Burkhead or James White or Damian Harris or Sony Michelle, you know, it always changed. You know, so that's kind of something you should be concerned about. But I, I think Damian Harris, you know, he could be that number one guy. I felt like, you know, at one point he did kind of, you know, take that lead running back role. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. But I think, you know, Sony Michelle, James White, and Damian Harris, I, I think could all be considered um, fantasy options. But I think those are guys you take like later on in your drafts. I mean, I, I, I think the guy you take first is probably either James White or Damian Harris. Um, Sony Michelle can go on draft in a lot of leagues. You know, I, I think when it comes to the receivers, I, I think that Nelson Aguilar is somebody that you know you could potentially get. Um, you know, for a flex option, and I think that's probably the best he is. Um, you know, let's see how he is with Cam Newton. You know, I don't really know how he's going to be with Cam Newton, but I, I think he's going to be productive. I, I think the one thing is the drops. You know, that was something that a lot of people really complained about him. You know, but I, I think he's going to be the number one guy for the Patriots. You know, Kendrick Bourne, I, I think he's probably going to go undrafted in a lot of leagues, but you know what, if the Patriots utilize him, he could be he could be good, you know, so he's another guy. Um, Jacoby Myers, he was really good last year. You know, he was probably their best receiver in a very um, putrid passing game for the Patriots. You know, I think he's another guy that, you know, maybe you look at. um, He might go undrafted. He could be a nice guy that you leave on your bench. You know, I think that's probably the same thing with Kendrick Bourne. I I think those two guys you can have on your bench. Same thing with Aguilar, but I think Aguilar is probably going to be the best out of the three. And then, of course, you have Cam Newton. Um, I want Cam to do well. You know, I think this is really his last shot. You know, this is really it. You know, the Patriots, they, you know, they've given him pieces now to throw to because he really didn't have that. And that's something that a lot of people could fall back on and say, well, Cam really didn't have any weapons to throw to. And that's why he really wasn't good last year. And it is a fair argument. Um, But Cam did look really bad at some points last year. I mean, he only had, like I said, eight, uh, sorry, I almost said 18. He had only eight passing touchdowns. I mean, that's not, that's not going to do it, you know. Um, he did have a lot of rushing touchdowns, and I think that's what makes him, you know, valuable in fantasy is if he continues to do that. But, you know, if he can elevate the passing game a little bit, 
you know, um, I I think that you know he could be a he could be somewhat of a solid um, quarterback option um, in fantasy leagues. So yeah, those are the players from the Patriots that I think you should consider drafting to your fantasy teams. And then finally, you have the Buffalo Bills. So you know, I really only have four guys here. I didn't include any of the running backs or the tight ends. Um, you know, I think those are all going to be on the waiver wire or on the bench possibly. Um, I think Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, they could be on your bench. Um, I mean, if you're playing in a really deep league, I mean, those guys are pro- obviously going to get drafted, I think. Like, if you're playing in, like, those 16 team, leads, 16 team leagues, which are absolutely, you know, ridiculous, you know, they're probably going to get taken in those leagues. But, you know, other than that, um, I probably would not take them. Like, in, you know, in, like, eight team leagues or ten team leagues, I, I think those, they could be bench players, but for the most part, I think you stay away from them. And I, I think also the tight end spots, I mean, you know, there's really – don't really have like that, you know, tight end. You know, you thought it was I thought it was gonna be Dawson Knox, but he really um hasn't really produced um like uh we hoped he would. So yeah, really I only got four guys here. Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, and Cole Beasley. Um I think Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders, they can be good flex options. You know, they could possibly be, you know, wide receiver twos, you know, and I think that all depends on, you know, who you have sitting out. Um, you know, if some of your players are out on bye weeks. Um, you know, I, I don't think they're really anything other than that. Um, they, they are solid, you know, they, they do come up in big spots, you know, and let's see how, you know, Emmanuel Sanders is with Josh Allen, you know, Emmanuel Sanders is able to produce to some capacity with, you know, Drew Brees being out or Drew Brees, you know, not being what he once was back in the day. You know, and he had Taysom Hill playing quarterback. You know, he's able to find some success, you know. But other than that, you know, he's not what he was with the Broncos. You know, he's not that, you know, wide receiver, too, that you can really rely upon. But I think he's definitely, him and Cole Beasley are definitely solid flex options. You know, and I think Cole Beasley's kind of Josh Allen's security blanket, you know, when things are going bad. So, you know, those two guys, you know, are going to fall later back in their drafts. Well, in, in the drafts, you know, I, I don't think they're going to be anything, you know, other than being solid flex options. Stefan Diggs is a wide receiver one. Um, he was amazing last year. And, you know, I think he's going to have another great season. You know, I think him leaving Minnesota was probably one of the best things that could happen to him. Josh Allen really trusted him, and he had a breakout season. And he's probably going to do the same thing again this upcoming season. Is he going to be able to replicate his numbers? We'll have to see. Um I mean, he was targeted a lot, you know, so we'll have to see. I, I think the targets are probably going to go down. I think now when you bring in Emmanuel Sanders, it's going to be some kind of, you know, better distribution of the football amongst the weapons in Buffalo. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. So Stefan Diggs, definitely a guy that's going to be taken in the first two rounds. I mean, he could possibly be a wide receiver. Uh, well, he's going to he, he's definitely a wide receiver one, but he's de- he could definitely be taken in the first round, you know, depending on, you know, how big your league is. So. Yeah, that's Stefan Diggs for you. And then finally, you have Josh Allen. Um, I I think Josh Allen is going to probably, you know, throw 40-plus touchdowns um, this upcoming season if everything goes well. You know, he's healthy and all that. Um, I I think that he's a guy that can be taken in the third or fourth round, you know, depending on, you know, if you're doing a 2QB league, obviously quarterbacks tend to fall back a little bit. But, you know, when it comes to single QB leagues, maybe you want to jump on the opportunity and get him. You know, I think he's going to be one of the top QBs off the board, you know, in the first couple rounds. So we'll have to wait and see. But, yeah, overall, that is my AFC East draft analysis. Those are the players that I think you should consider drafting for your fantasy league. So with that, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the week one matchups of the NFL schedule and talk about the you know, people you should start, people who I think you should prioritize drafting, knowing that that's going to be their uh, team certain matchup in week one and stuff like that. So stick around. We'll be right back here on the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! 
The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. back here on the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast for segment number three. We're going to talk about the week one matchups in the NFL and talk about the implications that it has on fantasy. So let's get right into it. So basically, we're just going to go through each matchup, and I'm just going to talk about, you know, some of the things that I'm going to be looking forward to see and, you know, who you should start and sit that week, you know, stuff like that. So let's get into the first matchup, which is the Dallas Cowboys visiting the Super Bowl champs, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, to open up the season on September 9th on a Thursday of this year. So looking into this matchup, you have Dak Prescott coming back, going up against this defense, which was phenomenal in the playoffs. I think it's a bad matchup for Dak. Um, I think he's going to be under a lot of pressure, you know, out of the gate, you know, with this Bucks defense which was tremendous in the playoffs. Um, I, I think him and Ezekiel Elliott, this is a bad matchup for them, you know, because Tampa Bay could stop the run, you know. I think with the secondary, you know, I, I think it's going to be better. Um, you know, it was a lot better, you know, towards the end of last year and then going into the playoffs. You know, I, I think Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb are worth starting. But I think in terms of Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, I think they are kind of guys you want to maybe stay away from and not start them. Well, I shouldn't really say you're not going to start them. You shouldn't start them. I think it's just they're just bad matchups. You know, I think, of course, you're going to start Zeke. You know, if you're taking Zeke in the first round, you know, of course, you're going to start him. Um, It's going to be a tough matchup, though, you know, for both Dak and for Zeke. I think especially more so for Dak because he's coming off of that really tough injury. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, but I think on the Buccaneers side, I think you really could start whoever you want. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, of course, Tom Brady, um, going up against that Cowboys defense. The Cowboys did go all in on defense in the draft. And I think their defense could be, you know, a little bit better than what it was. I mean, it can't be any worse. I mean, come on, you know, they had, they drafted arguably the best defensive player in the draft in Minka Parsons. Um, so, you know, that's definitely going to help them out. And, you know, with the guys that they have there, you know, already, like Demarcus Lawrence and Jalen Smith. And, you know, they rumors are they might be moving off of Leighton Van Der Esch, so we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, they got some guys on this defense that need to, you know, step up and produce like they're supposed to, you know. But, you know, I, I think, you know, in terms of the box, they got better matchups, you know, across the board as opposed to the Cowboys do. Um, I think the Bucks defense is a lot better than the Cowboys defense. I mean, I think everybody knows that. <laughs> so... You know, I, I think, you know, you start Brady, you know, Godwin, Mike Evans, they're going to have good matchups. Um, you know, I think the running backs, you, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a toss-up because, you know, Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette, I think, are going to split carries again. Um, you know, Ronald Jones, like I talked about, was better in the regular season. Fournette was a lot better in the postseason um, because, you know, Ronald Jones was uh, banged up a little bit towards the end of the season. But, um you know, overall, I think with the Bucks, you know, those are probably the guys that, you know, you want to start. Uh, the Cowboys, I think you start Amari Cooper. Um, I think you do start CeeDee Lamb. I think Michael Gallup's kind of the forgotten man. Um, I, I think he's probably going to be out of Dallas soon just because, you know, he's the third option. You know, not to say he's not talented. It's just, you know, CeeDee Lamb, he 
produced and he seemed to be you know take he took away a lot of uh, a lot of targets from Michael Gallup so you know we'll see um but I, I think the guys that you know I'm kind of more confident in on Dallas is Amari Cooper and CD um Dak could put up some garbage time points we'll have to wait and see um and Zeke I think he might have a bad game but I think you do you got to start him because he's your number one running back mostly all right, so next we got the Pittsburgh Steelers visiting the Buffalo Bills. You know, this was a matchup that we saw last season. The Bills won 26-15, to I believe the final score was of that game. You know, it's going to be a tough matchup. You know, the Pittsburgh Steelers' defense is going to be healthy. Uh, they did lose Bud Dupree in the offseason to the Tennessee Titans. Um, you know, so, I, and I, I other than that, I think the Steelers' defense is going to be at full strength. The question is not that. The question is their offense. Um, I don't really trust anybody in the Steelers offense. You know, this is kind of a bad matchup to start. You know, I think Nigel Harris can be a solid number two running back, you know, on any team, you know, when it comes to fantasy. But I got to see how the Steelers offensive line performs. If the Steelers offensive line protects Ben and they can run block, then you know what, the Steelers offense is going to be able to move the ball and I'd feel more confident, you know, starting some of these Steelers players, you know, like Juju, like Claypool, like Deontay Johnson, you know, and like Ben and Najee Harris. I think Najee Harris is probably the best player out of everybody um, on this team, just because Ben's the guy that's throwing the ball. And, you know, the Steelers, they tried to change up the offense last year, you know, having Ben get rid of the ball quickly. And, you know, it, it worked a little bit, but, you know, this is an offense where Ben's got to throw the ball down the field. I mean, you can't be doing all this dink and dug stuff, you know? So, you know, I think we got to see how the Steelers' offense does. Um, I'm hoping that they're good, um, but, you know, it's going to be tough. Now, you look on the Bills' side, I wouldn't start any of the running backs, you know, just because the running game really was terrible, non-existent for the Bills. I mean, Josh Allen was the best running back for the Bills last year, you know, and they're going up against the Steelers' defense, which was amazing against the run, you know. But, you know, I think you start Josh Allen. I, I think you, of course, start Josh Allen. Of course, you start Diggs. Um, you know, other than that, I, I think that's probably it. Um, but you know, I, I think they probably, it's probably going to be the same result, uh, like last year. I, I think the bills, they come out on top, they win this game. You know, I think in terms of fantasy, I think Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs, they have good games. I think those guys, you know, of course you're going to start them, you know, with the Steelers, you know, I think you kind of avoid starting some of those players. Then you got, uh, an interesting, game here well I I almost went to the four o'clock games so still in the one o'clock games you got the Eagles and the Falcons so you know Jalen Hurts Devontae Smith I think you those guys you could potentially start you know depending on what your league is if it's a two QB league and Jalen Hurts is your number two I think he's a solid option you know going up against his defense I think you do start Dallas Goddard um I I think as of right now that's he's probably going to be the number one tight end you know they still got Zach Ertz there now, do you draft Zach Ertz? Nah, I, I think uh, you probably still do, but very late in the draft. Um, those guys can have good matchups going up against the Falcons' defense, though it could be improved this year. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, you know, I, I think the Eagles, they have a good matchup, you know, against the Falcons. So, you know, Goddard, um, Devontae Smith, and Hertz, I think those guys, you could start them. Miles Sanders is another guy um, that could have a good game against the Falcons' defense. Then you got the Falcons going up against the Eagles defense. I mean, of course, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Ridley, and Kyle Pitts. I think those guys, you know, are all must starts against this Eagles defense, which really was not that good last year and, and, you know, did take some steps back and is not the championship defense that it was, you know, back in the day when they won the Super Bowl. You know, so I think those guys are all must starts. I think this is a great matchup for Atlanta's offense in week one, and I think they're going to score some points. So, you know, that's that game. Now we go to the Jets taking on Carolina. Sam Darnold playing against his old team. You know, for the fun of it, I would love to start uh, Sam Darnold against the Jets. But, you know, I, I think um, I think it's a wait-and-see thing, you know, with that. Um, we don't really know how Sam Darnold's going to be with the Carolina Panthers. I think you do start DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and, of course, Christian McCaffrey, you know, him coming back. I mean, Christian McCaffrey's a must-start every week. You know, with the Jets, I mean, there's really... I mean, I guess Corey Davis, you know, if you start him in a, at the flex, you know, and, and of course if you have Zach Wilson in a dynasty league. But outside of that, I don't really know. 
you know, I think a lot of these guys that I talked about with the Jets before, you know, they're all bench players. You know, they could possibly start, you know, like Jamison Crowder could be a possible flex option. But, you know, outside of that, I, I think the Jets, there's really nobody you uh, you want to start um, unless, you know, you're in deeper leagues or if you're doing a dynasty league where you start Zach Wilson. All right, so next we have the Vikings at the Bengals. I think the Vikings, this is a great matchup, you know, for them. I think Kirk Cousins is a guy that you could start. Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook. I mean, these are guys that I think are going to absolutely thrive in this matchup against the Bengals. The Bengals' defense really isn't that good. Um, I, I think, you know, Justin Jefferson can go off in this game. I think Dalvin Cook could have a great game. And, you know, this is not a very good team, and Kirk Cousins does good against bad teams. So, you know, I, I think that those are four guys that, you know, are going to have good games against this team, and I think those guys you can definitely start. I mean, of course, Dalvin Cook, you know, he's going to be he's going to be a must-start every week. Justin Jefferson, a must-start every week. Adam Thielen, you know, Kirk Cousins is kind of the guy that's, you know, on and off. You know, he's the guy that's, you know, can be a solid QB2 in two QB leagues. And, you know, he could be a, a solid backup, you know, in those one QB leagues. So, you know, I would I see that. Then kind of moving on to the Bengals, you know, this is going to be a tough matchup for them because the, the Vikings made some improvements on defense. They brought in Dalvin Tomlinson. They brought in Patrick Peterson to help out the defense. You know, Eric Hendricks and Anthony Barr should be back healthy. Um, and hopefully Daniel Hunter, his situation, you know, works out. So th this Vikings defense is going to be better. You know, so I think Joe Mixon, this is going to be a tough matchup for him. Um, I, I think, you know, the Bengals receivers, you know, as long as Joe Burrow is playing, you know, they're going to, they're going to, you know, I think they're going to put up some points, um, but they just got to be able to protect Joe Burrow. Um, if not, Joe Burrow is not going to have a good game. And really, whoever starts for the Bengals is not going to have a good game if it's not Joe Burrow. You know, I, I think T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, um, and Jamar Chase, and Tyler Boyd, you know, those guys, I, I think you can start. Um, it's going to be a tough matchup, though. This Vikings defense, you know, it wasn't as good as it has been in years past, but I think when healthy, it's going to be a lot better than what it was last year. Um, you know, it, it's going to be a tough matchup for them. I think for the Vikings, they're, if you get guys from the Vikings, they're going to thrive in this Week 1 matchup. For the Bengals, it's going to be a little bit more of a struggle. Then you got the 49ers visiting the Detroit Lions. I think when it comes to the 49ers, I think you obviously start George Kittle just because, you know, I think he's going to bounce back after, you know, being injured a lot throughout the season um, in 2020. You know, I, I think Raheem Mostert, I, I think he's going to be a solid RB2. Um, I think he's another guy that's going to have a nice matchup, you know, with this Detroit Lions defense. Um, you know, let's see how it is under Dan Campbell. I mean, who knows? I mean, it could surprise us all. I mean, the Lions could go out there and, and beat the 49ers in week one, and we'd all be shocked. Um, but I, I think he's another guy that, you know, you could start against this defense. Brandon Ayuk, I think, is going to be a solid flex option. I think he's going to be a sleeper next year. I think Debo Samuel could be a solid number two flex option. Those guys I think you could start. You know, Gar Jimmy Garoppolo, I, I think he's a guy you want to stay away from. Uh, just because there's some uncertainty on whether or not he's going to be the guy, you know, long term. You know, they did draft Trey Lance with the third overall pick. So, like I talked about, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be on a pitch count. You know, he's going to be on a short leash. You know, so we'll have to see what happens with that. On the Lions side, it's tough. I think it's a bad matchup across the board just because I think the 49ers defense is going to be a lot better than what it was last year. It's not going to have the injuries that it had last year. So I'd probably stay away from really starting anybody outside of maybe TJ Hawkinson and DeAndre Swift. I think this is a bad matchup for Jared Goff, especially because now he's not on the Rams anymore. You know, so his offensive line is going to be a lot weaker, and the weapons are not what they were in L.A. So that's my analysis there with that game. Then you got the Jags at the Texans. I think Trevor Lawrence is a must-start that week because the Texans' defense is really bad. Um, I think Marvin Jones, DJ Charks, those those guys you could start. Uh, the running back situation is a little bit different because they got three running backs coming out of the backfield. Hey, maybe you start Tim Tebow. You know, who knows? No, I'm just kidding. Do not do not start Tim Tebow. Um, that signing was uh, very interesting, but I don't, I don't think you start anybody. I, I don't think you start Tebow. On the Texan side, I mean, maybe you start Lindsey. Yeah, but, the, again, that's another backfield that's loaded. I, I think you stay away from anybody on the Texans. Um, and we don't even know who the quarterback's going to be. So, yeah, you stay away from that. Um, but yeah, Trevor Lawrence, DJ Chark, Marvin Jones, those guys you should definitely start uh, week one. 
Then you got the Seahawks at the Colts. Uh, I think you start Russ. I think you start Lockett. You start Metcalf. You know, um, Chris Carson, you start. This is a very good Colts defense, though, so it's a it's a bad matchup for the Seahawks going into week one. But, you know, of course you still got to start them. I mean, these guys are, you know, these guys are really good. Um, you know, I, I think Tyler Lockett, he's the boomer bust guy. He's a guy you got to worry about. Chris Carson a little bit, you know, because you've got DeVoris Buckner stuff in the run. So that's going to be a tough matchup. But I think you still start them. Russell Wilson, I think you still start, but I think he's going to have a couple turnovers in this game. Um, and then for India, I think, you know, they're going up against the Seahawks defense. You start Carson Wentz. I think you start Jonathan Taylor. Um, you know, outside of that, you know, everybody else I, I think is kind of, you know, riding the bench. I think the tight ends are riding the bench. Um, I think that T.Y. Hilton and Michael Pittman, they're kind of going to be guys riding the bench a little bit. But let's see how they do. You know, if Michael Pittman breaks out, you know, then that's a different story. But I, I think in terms of week one, I think Carson Wentz and Jonathan Taylor are like the – the must-starts in that matchup. Then you got a, another great matchup, Cardinals at the Titans. Um, I think you start Kyler Murray. You start DeAndre Hopkins, of course. You know, they're going to have great matchups going into this game. You know, the Titans defense really, you know, wasn't that good last year. Um, I think this is a great matchup for Kyler Murray and D-Hop to go off. Um, you know, maybe even James Conner, maybe, maybe. I think James Conner is a guy that's going to, you know, could possibly go undrafted. Um, going to be taken in late rounds in a lot of drafts. So, yeah, Kyler and D-Hop, I think, are going to ball out in this game. And I think Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown, I think those guys you obviously start. Uh, this is a good matchup for them. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, I think you start. I think this game is going to be very high scoring. Uh, both defenses really weren't that good last year, but they can be improved. You know, the Cardinals, they added uh, they added J.J. Watt. Um, you know, and the Titans, they added Bud Dupree. So they added pass rushers. So let's see if that helps them out. Um, but that's, you know, th- those are the match. Those are the players that I think are going to do good in those games. You got the Chargers at the Washington football team. That's another interesting game. Um, it's a tough matchup, you know, out of the gate for the Chargers. But I think you, of course, start Justin Herbert. You start Keenan Allen, uh, Austin Eckler. I think those are the guys you got to start. On the Washington football team side, you know, I, I think Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin, they'll get their points. I think Fitzpatrick, he'll be okay. Um, but you know, this is another game that's got good pass rushers. You got Joey Bosa on one side and then you got, I almost said Chris Young, you got Chase Young on the other side, you know, the, both of their front fours are pretty good, you know, so we'll have to see what happens with that. And then we move on to the 425 games. You got the Browns at the Chiefs, of course, Mahomes, Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, those are all must starts, possibly Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. And then on the other side, I think Baker Mayfield and this offense is going to do really good. I think ba- this is a good matchup for the Chargers, uh, sorry, not the Chargers, for the Browns. I think Baker, he can have a good game. And of course, I think you start Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Um, you know, they both, you know, get their points. Um, for the most part, you know, the Browns are able to make it work and these guys are able to get their points when they need to. So, you know, you got them. Do you start Odell Beckham Jr.? I, I think you do. I think at the flex or at wide receiver too. Um, I think he can have a good game. Um, hopefully he comes back healthy. I think Jarvis Landry, you know, of course he's going to ride the bench, you know, on a lot of teams. And then Austin Hooper is another guy, you know, that can have a good game um, at tight end. You know, so those are the players there that I, I, I think in this matchup that I think, um, you know, you could start. Um, then you got the Dolphins and the Patriots. You, you know, this is a tough game, you know, from both sides. I don't really like the matchup for either quarterbacks in this game. Um, you know, that Patriots secondary, the Dolphins defense going up against the Patriots offense, it's, it's kind of tough. Um, I don't really know who you start, you know, in both of these games. I think Devontae Parker possibly. I mean, I think one of the wide receivers from the Dolphins, I think you could start. The tight ends for the Patriots, I think you could start. You know, I think you could start Gaskin. I think you could start, you know, one of the Patriots running backs like Damian Harris or James White. Um, you know, I think this is a tough week one matchup for both quarterbacks. You know, so I, I'm not anticipating a lot of points are going to be. I think this might be a defensive battle, possibly. Um, so we'll have to wait and see with that. So then you got the other 425 games. You got the Broncos and the Giants. You know, this is, again, this is a tough matchup for the Broncos offense. Um, I don't really, the this Giants secondary, I think, is going to do a number on these Broncos receivers. And I don't think it's a good matchup for Drew Locke in week one. Um, so I, I think you kind of avoid starting some of these guys unless you have a lot of courage in them and then on the Giants side it's kind of a bad matchup for them in week one too 
Um, I, I think you start Saquon, of course, uh, Galladay. Uh, but outside of that, I, I think, um, you know, you stay away from, um, you know, a lot of these players on the Giants offense as well. You know, this is this could be another, um, this could be a close game. This could be a defensive battle as well, depending on how each quarterback does. Um, this is a, Yeah, this is a game that's going to hinder on how good each quarterback is going to do. But, yeah, I think you start Galladay. I think you start Saquon. Um, you know, with the Broncos, you know, it's kind of tough because, you know, Jerry Judy really had some flashes, but, you know, there wasn't there wasn't consistent QB play for him to have the season that he wanted to have. Cortland Sutton was out for the whole year uh, for the most part. Um, I think he only played in one game, but then he tore his ACL and was out. Um, and then, um, you know, Melvin Gordon, this is tough, you know, going up against this Giants rush defense. And then... Um, you know, Noah Fant, he might be the guy that I probably have the most confidence in, believe it or not, out of all these guys. So, yeah, so you got that. Uh, this is a tough matchup, you know, for both teams out of the gate. Um, then you got the Packers at the Saints. I think you start Kamara and Michael Thomas. Um, I think you start Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones. Um, you know, let's see what Rodgers, if Rodgers comes back. You know, we'll have to wait and see with that. Um, but, yeah, that's my... That's my take on that game. That should be a great game. They Both these teams played last year. Then you got the Bears at the Rams. You know, I, I think Stafford, you, you could start him. Um, Cam Akers, Robert Woods. This Bear defense is pretty good still. I mean, they still got some playmakers on it. Um, but I think you do start Stafford. You know, on the Bears side, I, I mean, you know, maybe David Montgomery. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough matchup for the Bears week one. Um, David Montgomery, Allen Robinson, I think those guys, you know, most people are going to start. Uh, those are not good matchups for, you know, for them going into this uh, week one matchup. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, I, I don't know who the quarterback's going to be. So, you know, I, I think you know, Matthew Stafford, you start. Cam Akers, I think, is a guy that's going to get the start in a lot of leagues. And Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. But, you know, I, I think this is another game that it could be a it could be a defensive battle or Stafford could go off. We'll see. Then, you know, the last matchup is the Raiders and the Ravens um, on Monday night. I think Lamar Jackson gets a start. I think J.K. Dobbins gets a start. Mark Andrews gets a start. I think they can, you know, I think Lamar can have a great game against this defense. And then, you know, on the Raiders side, it's a tough matchup. I think Josh Jacobs will get the start in most leagues and Waller, of course. Uh, but outside of that, I think that's really it. Uh, I think this is a bad matchup for the Raiders in Week One. I, this is a great matchup for the for the Ravens. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my take on uh, the Week One matchup. So we'll kind of talk about the schedule more um, in the next show. But yeah, that's my take on uh, you know in terms of fantasy, you know, for the Week One matchups. It's great that the schedule finally came out. So we're gonna take another quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the top ten fantasy quarterbacks. That I think are gonna be. I think that's gonna be the top ten. Um, quarterbacks for the 2021 NFL season, and that will conclude the show. So stick around. We'll be right back here on the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Are you looking to get your college football fix? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? The GSMC College Football Podcast is your ticket to all things college football. Join us as we talk college football from the national championship, the college rivalries, the bowl game, to the Heisman Trophy, to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, the Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. Download the GSMC College Football Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. And we're back here on the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast for the last segment of the show. We're going to talk about the ten, the top ten fantasy QBs that I think are going to be the top ten for 2021. So I did a, a top ten list, you know, way back. I don't remember what show it was, but 
these are the quarterbacks that I think are going to be, you know, the best for fantasy in 2021. So let's get right into it. So at number 10, we have the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady. Now, Brady was solid last year, had 40 touchdowns last year. But I think now in year two of this system, and with everybody coming back like Antonio Brown, like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski is back. You know, you have the running backs in Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. I think Brady's going to have another productive season. Um, I think he could be a QB1. The one thing I worry about is the stinkers that Brady does have. You know, if Brady is not protected, he could be really bad. And we saw that in both Saints games. Um, you know, we saw that in the Bears game. You know, Brady Brady has to be protected. And if he's not, he's not going to have a good game. You know, that's the one thing I worry about. But you know what? I, I think th that the Bucks they have so many weapons. You know, now that they have that continuity, you know, now, you know, and now they're going to have the off season. you know, that, you know, like teams are supposed to have in a normal year, you know, OTAs, you know, training camp, preseason. So I think that's all going to help Brady. And I think Brady's draft stock is going to be a little bit up this year. Um, and it's crazy to think of that, you know, with him being at his advanced age, you know, him being 43, you know. So I, I think Brady's going to have another great year, and I think he's going to be another top, you know, quarterback in fantasy. Um, I, I think, you know, in terms of QB, two QB leagues, I, I think he's a solid number two. I mean, I have I have a lot more confidence in him being a QB two, you know, in my two QB league than him being my first QB, you know. Because of the advanced age and, you know, the times where he could be really bad. So, yeah, I have Brady at 10. And then at number 8, I have Matthew Stafford. You know, I, I think, you know, I've talked about it a lot. This is the best supporting cast that Matthew Stafford has had since he, you know, entered the league, you know, back in, I believe it was 2009. So, you, you know, you got Robert Woods, you got Cooper Cup. Now I, I have talked about, you know, it's not like, you know, when he had Megatron. I've said that a lot, you know, but... You know, he's got good weapons around him. He's got a great offensive line. You know, I think Stafford has the potential to, you know, have a really great season, and especially because now you have Sean McVay, which might be the best coach that Stafford's ever played under. You know, let's see what the Rams can do. I, I think Stafford, he is going to have a great season. The one concern is the injuries. You know, he's been banged up a lot the past couple of seasons, and that is something that, you know, a lot of people should take into an account. You know, I, but I, I think he could be a solid QB1 this year. Um, you know, when it comes to single Q, uh, single QB leagues. And then, you know, two QB leagues, I, I think, you know, compared to Brady, I think he's a guy that, you know, he could be your QB1. I, I, I think so. You know, as long as he's healthy, you know, that's the one concern I have with him. But I think with this offense, you know, the sky's the limit for what this team can do. And they did also bring in Deshaun Jackson. And, um, you know, they have some other guys there as well. Um, you know, they do have Tyler Higby at the tight end spot. So, you know, this Rams offense is going to be really good. And I think, you know, Matthew Stafford is going to be a top fantasy QB because of the weapons and the, um, you know, the head coach that he now, uh, has been paired up with in Sean McVay. So along with Matthew Stafford at number eight, we got Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was off to a fantastic start. It looked like he was going to run away with the MVP and, you know, he was great. And, you know, overall, he had a great season. But it's just, you know, towards the end, you know, it it really wasn't working out. Running backs were injured a lot. Um, you know, he was getting hit a lot. He was getting sacked. Um, that was a problem. But, you know, I, I think Russell Wilson still is going to be a top fantasy QB. Um, hopefully, the Seahawks offensive line is able to protect him. And, you know, he did have a couple of um, duds last year, you know, where he really didn't do much. But, out of the gate, he was fantastic. Um, you know, I think DK Metcalf, he's going to have, you know, I think he's going to have his best season. Um, Tyler Lockett is that boomer bust player. But you know what? He's a guy that, you know, like I talked about, he's a guy that, you know, you should definitely draft. Um, you know, uh, but, you know, hopefully for his sake, for Russell Wilson's sake, the offensive line, you know, holds up, protects him. And if, you know, if he has time to throw, you know, he's going to he's gonna do some damage. So I got Russell Wilson at number eight. At seven, I have Dak Prescott. Obviously, he got injured last year in week five against the Giants because of the ankle injury that he sustained late in that game. And, you know, it was terrible, you know, especially because it was a contract year. You know, he wanted to get paid. Um, the Cowboys did end up paying him, so he did get his money. 
But let's see how he is off of that ankle injury. I, I think, you know, if the Cowboys' offensive line, if they're able to protect him, it's the same thing with Russell Wilson. If the Cowboys' offensive line is able to protect him, and Ezekiel Elliott has a great year, I think Dak Prescott's going to be fine. I really do, um, in terms of fantasy. I, you know, I don't know how the Cowboys are going to be this year as a team. I don't know. I, I really don't know what their record is going to be and all that. Um, you know, but I, I think the Cowboys' offense is going to put up a lot of points. And, you know, we so, we see them put up a lot of garbage points, you know, and that really helps people out in fantasy, you know. I, I think with Dak back, you know, that, that raises the stock again for CeeDee Lamb, for Amari Cooper. Um, I think the forgotten man is Michael Gallup, like I talked about. You know, I, I just think that, you know, with CeeDee Lamb, you know, Michael Gallup is kind of the forgotten guy. And um, I think he could still, you know, produce on this team, just not, you know, in terms of fantasy. But, um... You know, overall, I think Dak Prescott's going to have a monster year. You know, with the weapons around him, I think the offensive line is going to be a little bit better. And Ezekiel Elliott, I think, is going to have a bounce-back season as well. So I got Dak Prescott at number seven. Then at number six, I have the MVP, Aaron Rodgers. Now, I don't know where Aaron Rodgers is going to be, you know, in September. You know, they the Packers, they just signed Blake Bortles, you know, to be the third QB on the roster. And a lot of people are saying, well, that's Aaron Rodgers' replacement. Well, I don't really know about that. We'll have to wait and see on that. But I think wherever he is, I think he's still going to be a top fantasy QB. I mean, I, I think it's really going to come down to whether he's going to be with Green Bay or whether he's going to be with the Broncos. Um, he just seems to be linked with the Broncos. I mean, it just seems like that's where, you know, all the signs are pointing to. But regardless, I think he's going to still be a top fantasy QB. I, I think he's more consistent than the first couple guys that I um, that I named. You know, I mean, you know, Dak Prescott's coming off of a horrific injury. You know, I think Tom Brady has a lot of duds. And not to say that Rodgers didn't have a dud. He did have a dud against Tampa um, in Week 6. You know, he's been healthy the past couple seasons, knock on wood. You know, and he's coming off a season where he had 48 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. I mean, I think if he comes back to Green Bay, I don't think he's going to, you know, replicate those numbers. But, you know, I think he could throw 30-plus touchdowns again. You know, with Devontae Adams and Robert Tanyan becoming a weapon, you know, they drafted Amari Rodgers, Alan Lazard, Valdez Scanling. You know, they do got some pieces there. You know, so, you know, I, I think Rodgers could excel once again. Um, if he goes to the Broncos, you know, I, I don't know what the package would be for him, but I think he could excel in that offense as well. You know, I, I think he could be a top fantasy QB once again, you know, and I, and he's not what he was, obviously you know, five, six years ago, but, you know, he's still, he's still great, I mean, he's still going to be, I, I think he's going to be a QB1 once again in fantasy, you know, he, he played like it, you know, so I, I think that, you know, he's going to be up there once again, he's got the weapons around him, it's just a matter of, you know, what is he going to do, I mean, you know, is he going to play for Green Bay, is he going to hold out, you know, what what's going to happen, we have no idea, so I have Aaron Rodgers at number six, and at number five, I have Lamar Jackson, the quarterback of the Ravens. Um, I, I think he's going to be better this year. You know, obviously in 2019, he was fantastic, you know, winning the MVP. Um, you know, but last year, you know, did kind of take a step back. The Ravens, you know, the Ravens passing game was last. You know, they, they were last in passing yards last year. Um, and a lot of people said Lamar kind of regressed to an extent. Um, but you know what, they, I think they addressed it, they brought in Sammy Watkins, they brought in, um, they drafted Rashad Bateman, so, you know, I think the, the receiving core is going to be a little bit better, um, they don't have guys like Des Bryant, who, you know, hadn't played in a couple years, and Willie Sneed, you know, they, they brought in some guys that, that can help out this passing game, because they didn't have a receiver that went over a thousand yards last year, which was, uh, you know, that's kind of sad, you know, so, We'll have to see with that. I think really what makes Lamar special is what he's able to do, you know, as a dual threat. Being able to run, you know, being like that Michael Vick 2.0, you know. I think that's what makes him really valuable. Um, But I I think the thing that's concerning about him is the passing game. You know, that's why I have him a little bit higher than other guys like Aaron Rodgers. You know, is because of what he can do out of the backfield. You know, because the Ravens are one of the top rushing teams in the NFL, and he's a big reason for that. Um, you know, the Ravens are a good team. You know, they got some good pieces around him. I, I think he's going to have a bounce back season. I think he's a guy that, you know, holds himself accountable and, you know, wants to do well. And we'll just have to wait and see what he does. Um, but I, I think he's another guy. I, I think he's a solid QB one still. 
just because the dimension that he adds, you know, in the running game. You know, it, I think I would like to see him develop better as a passer, um, which would, you know, make him a little bit higher on this list. But, you know, I'll have to wait and see. I think the 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 pieces that they added around him in the receiving game, I, I think that's going to help tremendously. And I, I think him, you know, being that dual threat is going to help him out a lot. So I have him at number five. At number four, I have the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, what can you say, you know, about this guy? I mean, he comes into the league, he throws 50 touchdowns his first season as a starter. You know, he wins MVP. Then the following season, you know, doesn't reach 50 touchdowns exactly, was injured a couple games, but he wins the Super Bowl. And then last year, he makes it to the Super Bowl again, got absolutely annihilated. Now, the thing that I like that the Chiefs did is they said, you know what, the offensive line was terrible. You know, they were missing both of their starting tackles. You know, we got to go out and we got to fix this offensive line. They signed the center from the Rams. They traded for Orlando Brown to play, I believe, right tackle, one of the tackle spots. Um, Then they drafted another center in the draft. They signed Joe Tooney, the guard from the Patriots. So they addressed the offensive line, you know. So I think that's going to be the key for the Chiefs next year, or this year, sorry, is the offensive line. The offensive line is protecting Mahomes. He's going to put up insane numbers. And on top of that, you still got Tyree Kill there. You still got Travis Kelsey. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more from the running game, you know, with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. You know, hopefully he can make a big jump in year two. He was pretty good last year, um, but I'd like to see a little bit more. Um, But, yeah, I think Mahomes is, again, going to have another great season as long as he's healthy. I think he's, he's protected. You know, he's going to be great, you know, and I, and I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder because of what happened in the Super Bowl. So I think he's going to have another insane season, and he's going to be one of the first QBs taken off the board. He, board. He's definitely in the top five. However, I don't I, – I he slipped a little bit for me. I think there are three QBs ahead of him, believe it or not, that I think are going to have better seasons than him in terms of fantasy. I, I You know, let's see where everybody is at the end. I, I think he could ultimately be the guy holding up the Lombardi trophy. But, you know, let's see, you know. But I, I think that in terms of fantasy, he's not going to be the best QB. At number three, I got Justin Herbert. Now, again, like the Chiefs, the Chargers prioritized fixing this offensive line and building this offensive line to protect Justin Herbert. They signed Corey Lindsley. They drafted Rashawn Slater. They brought in Matt Feeler, the guard from the Steelers. You know, and they you know they brought in um, Brian Bulaga last year. So the offensive line is going to be really good for the Chargers. And I think that, you know, because of that, Herbert's going to have an even better season. Um, And, you know, Herbert being the quarterback, it put everybody, you know, back on notice in terms of Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen had a great season last year. I think Austin Eckler, you know, coming back and, you know, hopefully not being injured throughout the whole season, I think that's going to help tremendously. You know, Herbert can use him as a security blanket. You know, they brought over Jared Cook to play tight end um, because obviously Hunter Henry went to the Patriots, you know. So, you know, Herbert's going to have a lot of weapons around him. I think he's going to be really good this year. I think he could throw possibly 40 touchdowns this year. Um, You know, we saw what he could do out of the gate. You know, I've talked about it a couple of times, you know, with Tyrod Taylor, you know, that whole situation with him getting that injection and, you know, not being able to play the the medical staff for the Chargers messing up and Tyra Taylor wasn't able to play so they just threw Herbert in to play Mahomes and it was a great matchup you know it was, it was a great game um it wasn't very high scoring but you know what I, I think we're gonna we're gonna be in for a treat next year having these two guys go at it um I think Herbert's draft status is his draft value is going to increase tremendously this year I think he's going to be one of the first QBs taken off the board um, you know, especially because of what he was able to do. I mean, he has a great arm. You know, his deep ball is really good. Um, you know, the Chargers offense is going to be really good again. And as long as guys stay healthy and Herbert's protected, he's going to be a top QB in fantasy. So now moving on to number two is Kyler Murray. Um, his rookie season, he was pretty good. 20 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and then he increased it by six having 26 touchdowns to 12 interceptions in 2020, was really good on the ground. 
Um, that's, I think, what made him deadly uh, as a fantasy option. You know, I, I think that's what puts him ahead of Herbert is just because of what he's able to do, you know, running the football, you know, like Lamar Jackson. But I, I, I think Kyler Murray is a better passer than Lamar is. Um, and I and I think Kyler Murray has better weapons around him than Lamar Jackson does. Um, I think Lamar Jackson has better running backs than Kyler Murray, but I, I mean I, I think DeAndre Hopkins is better than pretty much every wide receiver, you know, on the Ravens right now, you know, and you know DeAndre Hopkins he was good last year, was down in terms of touchdown receptions, but you know overall had a good season. Um, you know they brought in AJ Green. You know, and it seems like Larry Fitzgerald is on his way out, which is really disappointing. Um, but, you know, I think Kyler Murray is going to be great. I, hopefully, you know, the Cardinals, they protect him better because he did get banged up a lot um, towards the end of the season. And, uh, you know, he was, you know, in and out of the game in Week 17 against the Rams when the Cardinals really needed him, you know, because the Cardinals were trying to make the playoffs and they didn't make it because, you know, they um, bad QB play led to them not making the playoffs. And, you know, again, in large part because Kyler Murray was injured. Um, I think the Cardinals overall as a team are going to be better. And I think Kyler Murray is going to throw 30-plus touchdowns, 35-plus this year. Um, You know, I I think now with the continuity and, you know, a more advanced relationship between him and DeAndre Hopkins, I I think that, you know, that's going to do wonders for this offense. And because of that, Kyler Murray is going to be, I think, the second-best QB in fantasy at number one um is josh allen josh allen you know i've talked about a lot on the show you know has made great improvements throughout his career so far um you know especially last year you know the bills bringing in stefan diggs that really helped this bills offense out a lot you know i talked about how stefan diggs was targeted a lot last year especially um you know him and josh allen have a great relationship you know and I, I think that Josh Allen is going to throw 40-plus touchdowns this year. You know, now they bring in Emmanuel Sanders to go along with those weapons. I, I think the, really the concern is the running game. You know, we, I talked about that. We don't really know what the running game is going to be like. But, um, you know, overall with Josh Allen, you know, he's a du- he's another dual threat. You know, he was arguably the, the Bills' best running back last year. You know, he's got a strong arm. I think he needs to be a little bit more accurate with his passes. You know, sometimes he's just, you know, overthrowing guys and whatever. But, you know, I I think now with Stefan Diggs there, you know, and you bring in Emmanuel Sanders, who I think could be another security blanket for him, um, along with Cole Beasley, you know, I I think he's going to be, he's going to be really good uh, this upcoming season. Um, And I anticipate he will throw, I think, 40 plus touchdowns as long as he doesn't get injured and anything like that. You know, I think he's going to be he's going to be the top QB this year in fantasy um, just because of, you know, the trend that I've seen, you know, with him, you know, increasing his numbers every season. Um, I think like I said, I think he's going to throw, you know, 40 plus touchdowns uh, this upcoming season. So with that, those are the top 10 QBs that I have entering the 2021 NFL season. Those are the QBs that I think are going to be the top 10. So. That is all the time that we have for today. Um, so happy that the NFL schedule has come out, you know, and to see all the matchups coming up. We're going to get into more stuff, you know, in the next show about the schedule and, you know, other stuff that I uh, have planned to talk about on the show. So, yeah, that's all the time we got. A great show as always. Like I said, um, next couple of shows will be focusing on, you know, the NFL schedule. We'll do some other rankings lists you know, like the top running backs, you know, top receivers. We'll get into all that. Um, you know, I mean, it's only May. We get, we're ways away. These are like my very early predictions. Um, you know, in the coming months, you know, we'll start doing mock drafts, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's what I got planned for the upcoming shows. So with that, make sure to subscribe to our social media platforms and write a nice review on our website. We greatly appreciate it. And, yeah, that is all the time we got. So I'm Kenneth Grunfelder signing off for the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Have a good day, and we will see you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. 
part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.